Itupa. And I'm currently living and working in Zambia. I'm working for uh, AWOMI, that is African Women Millennium Initiative for Poverty and Human Rights Zambia, which is a, a non governmental organization operating and registered in Zambia, working on uh, uh, diverse issues of women's, women's issues on uh, human rights, uh, governance, um, economic empowerment, social and culture, as well as. Uh, HIV and AIDS and uh, reproductive health and rights. So when I looked at the training, um, the training content, I was particularly interested because my organization has a, a segment of uh, international law engagement as well as region. And therefore, looking at the course content for me was an ideal training to really be part of. Because I knew that coming back, I would have been uh, knowledgeable, more knowledgeable on how effective to engage in the in the Human Rights Council, not just that as well, but also to that I was going to go back to Zambia with um, experience of being at the Human Rights Council, mm -hmm. which really I think is very, very important because it gives, doesn't just gives you an opportunity to be part of the council, it also gives you an opportunity to you know practical things that are acceptable and not acceptable at the Human Rights Council, so that was really mm -hmm. ideal for me. There are two practical things that I learned from the training that it's always important when you learn something to pass on to the other person next to you. Mm. And that was very, very critical for me. So when upon returning back home to Zambia, I did a, a report of my trip to Geneva of the training that I shared with my colleagues in the organization. Mm. And emphasize, I emphasize, in that report, I remember emphasizing the importance of us strengthening uh, our human rights program to align it with the international uh, uh, but it, it, to align it with participating international um, uh, systems, and that is particularly with the Human Rights Council. And uh, that was really very, very important for me to make sure that I pass on the information and make my colleagues understand about what goes on in the Human Rights Council, which really was received very, very well, very well. And uh, the second thing for me was that I had to think of now the external partners that we had. And I remember my action project was on training on you know, civil society organization on how to effectively engage in, in the international human rights uh, system, which mm -hmm. is particularly the Human Rights Council. Mm -hmm. And I developed that concept looking at Zambia, but as time went after I left the course was that uh, my, my, my vision grew bigger to just not focusing on Zambia, but the region, Southern Africa. And therefore my proposal for implementation was focusing on bringing seven countries to Zambia to be trained on on how to engage with the specifically the Human Rights Council and specific focus on the UPR. So mm -hmm. those were the key things that I carried with me back home that I had tasked to uh, do something about. Okay. The challenge first to implementing my project was resources because I had the knowledge and I had um, a strategy on how to do it. But then the issue was the money to bring the people to, to Zambia, mm -hmm. pay for the accommodation, transportation, and whatnot, and just keep people comfortable uh, as, as we tap knowledge from them, as we give knowledge to them as well. Uh, so resources was the biggest challenge mm -hmm. in that um, it was a very big and ambitious project to say, mm -hmm. which I, I remember the international service staff were helping me uh, put my thoughts together, they were, they were like not sure also having it implemented because it was like 20, 21,000 US dollars budget mm -hmm. and somehow I was confident that I was going to get that money because I had put up a good concept and uh, luckily enough met in the process met one funder which became so interested in, in my work because of the concept which was really good and convincing and they offered their support so and just more to that, what that was encouraging was that it, my budget was 21,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. They were offering to give 30,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. In that they also suggested certain things like, um, why don't you, what, uh, uh, in a, the line with your uh, project training that you're doing, why don't you do a handbook? Mm -hmm. So it was really good. So I'm currently working on a handbook specifically, similar to what the, the Office of the High Commission has done, mm -hmm. that is, uh, Working with the human rights, working with the United Nations, uh, but then this book it's working with the Human Rights Council with specific focus on the UPR. Yeah. 
it's for civil it's a handbook for civil society organization which will soon be uh, published. Most of the times, a civil society organization, we are so expectant mm. uh, in the sense that we expect the state to do so much that if we were going to put ourselves in their shoes, we would not even think of doing one single thing. So I think it's important to be realistic mm. that the state, they are made up of people, individual people just like you, and therefore your expectations should be very smart, mm. you should be realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, what doesn't work is that uh, civil society should not expect too much, especially from the, the UPR, it being that uh, most of the outcome that comes out of the UPR are non-binding, as much as mm -hmm. we know, so we should not expect too much. Before engaging in the system, it was a bit tricky dealing with the Ministry of Justice in my country, but one of the things during my stay here in Geneva that I met the, 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 the delegation from Zambia the Ministry of Justice, and uh, my uh, my goal was to establish good relationship with them, and that has worked until today. That I just pick up my phone and and, and try and call for, I try and ask for an appointment, and it's given like that because mm -hmm. I've made them to understand that I'm not an enemy. They're not my enemy, but we are together partners in trying to improve the human rights situation in our country because we are citizens of Zambia and therefore we should work together as partners. Uh, what works best is that interacting with the system, uh, it, it, it has taught me that it's always very, very good to be more realistic in your approach to work as well as be, be more strategic. I think that it's, it's, it's important that you have to be more strategic in the way you approach issues of advocacy, in the way you approach issues of dealing with, with your state, in, in incorporating with them, as in terms of coming up with a report, engaging them in the in implementation process of the recommendation. It's very, very important that you are strategic. You know what you want, you know what you expect, and you must also have, know that challenges will be there. And also, just a caution, just try and come up with alternatives for uh, dealing with the challenges that you might face, and always just be on time and uh, yeah, and just be more smart and realistic and more strategic. And I should note that uh, it's worthwhile engaging in the in the system. For example, on my action project, one of the countries that I, I, I trained was Malawi, Lesotho, and Lesotho already has been to the to UPR during this session, and I could see the results, the fruits of, a, of the hard work that I put together with my colleagues to train the civil society organization who are actually now effectively engaging the Human Rights Council. They're able to find their way to Geneva, mm -hmm. lobby, the, 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 lobby with their state to, to engage in the national consultation process, as well as be here in Geneva and lobby other diplomats to ask questions, make certain recommendations, and, and just uh, express certain concerns. So really engaging in the system is one thing that is really of value, but the key issue is how do you do it? How do you do it strategically in order for you to heal the successful uh, results that you intend to mm -hmm. get out of the whole engagement in the process? Uh, in the case of Zambia, a little bit of embarrassing. I, I think that the state had reserved their, 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 their position on certain uh, recommendations, which uh, until now they haven't stated mm -hmm. the, the, their position, which is one of the things that we are following up. and just reminded them and they were, they were like, I'm very happy that we reminded them and they, they're going to act on that. So now the key issue for us is the Zambian uh, civil society organization, how do we coordinate to work together and uh, monitor, not just monitor but influence the implementation uh, of the recommendations. So it's how do we engage with the government um, effectively to monitor the implementation process, but not just monitor, how do we engage and influence that. So one of the things that we encourage civil society in Zambia was to pick on issues that were the recommendation that relates closely to their work. So then that way it's, e it's easier to, co to, to, to complement government efforts in the implementation process. So for now, for me, is that I'm not just, I, as, as you've heard, my, my focus is just not Zambia, but I'm helping civil society in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. So I'm still helping Malawi, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, as well as Swaziland. Namibia as well in, in, in this process. So mm -hmm. uh, my, my work is still a lot, but I'm mm -hmm. very happy because the people that I'm working with in these countries are very receptive. And also the other thing is in this training, since we came back as a training of trainers, uh, we also trying to work on a regional strategy on how as 
civil society organization in, in, in Africa can collaborate together, form up a strong civil society organization that are particularly have interest to work with the, with, with the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm.